Hey Bobcats, this is Mrs. Upton. I miss you guys, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I decided that I'd like to share one of my favorite books with you tonight. It's called How I Became a Pirate by Melinda Long and David Shannon. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So let's go ahead and get to reading our story. Pirates have green teeth when they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sandcastle, minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it and because I could hear the pirates singing, hey ho, blow the men down. They were a little off key. I tried to tell dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then they were rowing to shore. When they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy thar mighty, this be the Spanish main? No, I said, this is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. We walked around my, he walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat, then yelled back at his crew. He's a digger. He's a good one to boot. A good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey? The head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacobs, sir, I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braidbeard and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We have a chest to bury. I treasure, the others shouted. You're coming with us, Braidbeard told him. I didn't think mom and dad would mind as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. That's how I became a pirate. As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and the jewels. Gotta find a safe place for this here treasure. It's high time we were off, he announced. We're off, we all shouted, and then we set sail. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea shanties, the louder the better, and to say real pirate stuff like land lover and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, down the hatch, me hearties, down the hatch they all yelled. By now it was past my bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye opened, just in case, and they don't change into pajamas unless they want to. Pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe scrubbing the deck. I wanted to be a pirate forever. But then I found out what else they have to do, or what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew yelled. And the only thing they had to read was a map. Don't you have any books, I asked. Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask for a good night kiss. Uh-oh. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when the storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody was running around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me that it would all be over soon, and nobody even noticed me. I decided I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Just then, flash, crash, crack. Lightning hit the mass and split it down the middle. What'll we do now? Yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. When the storm was over, we rowed back to shore 
and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again, but I don't think I'll need it. Come up from the beach, go around the side of the house. <gasps> it's Jeremy Jacobs' backyard, so he's burying it in his own backyard. After that, the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to set sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed a flag to me and said, you'll make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard said, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the others shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. I have soccer practice. Looks part of the pirate scene. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my, one of my favorite books, How to Become a Pirate. I miss you all, and I hope you have a wonderful night. See you soon. Bye, Bobcats.